But uh, so I'll share the screen with you guys. Okay, can you guys see the screen? Hi, can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Okay, I just start my presentation. So, uh, today uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, introduction of machine vision. So, um, what is a uh, machine vision actually? So, how how do they work? Okay. So, machine vision actually uh, can be split into three basic step. So the first step is to process the image. So you capture the image and then you process it. Okay. And then after you process the image, from the process image, you try to find some, uh, some parameters from the image. Maybe some contour, maybe some uh, different, different features of the image. And then you recognize, recognize it okay, as a, some sort of a object. And then you pass the object to the machine to take some action. So for example, uh, one of my project last year is to get the image of a lorry and then we process it. We find the plate of the lorry. Okay. The lorry, uh, actually the, the, the project is a construction company. So once the lorry, they, they, the, the construction company, they want to measure how much the lorry have dumped the, the sand into the site. So one way, uh, what they previously do is uh, manually. So the people will stand in the load bridge and then they will uh, look at the lorry and then, uh, oh, what's the, the plate and then how much it weighed. Okay, so they input, uh, they, they record down and then they pass, pass to the HQ at the end of the day. So what we actually do is uh, we, use image processing to process the, the, the plate and then we capture the, the weight of the lorry and then we just send directly to the, to the server and the HQ can directly capture the, the, all the data in real time. So this is how uh, one of the use of image processing uh, I have deal with. Uh, okay. So let's uh, talk about image processing. So what's image processing is uh, basically it's just uh, some filter method, filter like uh, edge detection, um, a lot of different filter method and also masking, masking which is uh, mostly used in a uh, color detection. I will talk about it later. So and blurring, blurring which uh, used for reducing the noise in the image and also thresholding, okay. So maybe sometimes you want uh, something that is uh, brighter. You do want the dark one. So you use the thresholding. And also background sub subtraction. So background subtraction is uh, used for, you subtract two image. So the remaining will be the, the pixel that are moving. So uh, this one used mainly for moving object detection uh, and uh, locating the contour. So uh, what is a contour is a, uh, Contour is the you can you can you can think it as a parameter the 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 circumference circumference of a circle. So that the thing the shape of the object will uh, we call it contour in uh, image processing. So this is what we are going to co cover today. I also talk about what is uh, object detection. So after you filter the image. Okay, the image become a uh, all the noise, all the do one the, the thing that you do one you you already take it out. So uh, you left with a filtered image, the processed image. You will pass it into an object recognition algorithm. So what we conventional conventional use is a neural network, RCNN, YOLO. Uh, you only look once. Okay, deep learning. So this uh, and others method. Lah. So this four is uh, what uh, in the market they use. Okay. And lastly, you pass into the machine and see whatever action they want. The, the machine, you just program it to do. Okay. So today I'll focus in uh, image processing. 
So let's let us start the the course by uh, open your Visual Studio Code. So if you guys uh, have uh, the instruction, so maybe you have already installed the Visual Studio Code. Let me uh, a new window. Okay. Okay, let's start this Visual Studio Code, okay? So, and then next step is to create a new folder. So, file, open folder. So, in whatever directory that you want, to you, uh, just right click, new, okay, folder. So, just call it the name that you want to call it. I just call it uh, my machine vision. Uh, my machine, my MV that machine vision. Okay. So you select the folder. Okay, this is what you get after that. So now, I hope you guys can uh, follow. If you cannot follow, you just type in the chat. Okay. Because uh, for some reason, I cannot hear your voice. Okay. Uh, chat. Okay, so can't hear anything. Maybe your your speaker is not open. Uh, so I muted all of them. Okay, That's why okay. you cannot hear. If you want, I can unmute. Uh, never mind. I think I just look at the chat. It's okay. <laughs> okay. If uh, I will also uh monitor the chat. Like if anything, then I will. Okay, then I just I just continue. So okay. in this uh in this page, you just right click at the left hand side and then you click on the open in terminal. Okay. So you will see this thing pop up below here. Okay. So if you can't click anything, you just right click again and then open in terminal again. So you try to type ls, but no, dir, okay? So dir is a shell code, so you just see whatever inside the directory. Lah. So now you guys need to install the OpenCV. Uh, I hope you guys have already installed the Python as uh, the instruction, the requirement for this course, Python 3. So uh, let's try do do you guys have installed Python or not? So let's type P Y T O T H O N Python and click enter. So if you have a uh, this pop up means you can already get into Python, then it's okay. So you just check your version. Is it three point seven and above? Python three point seven and above. Okay. Make sure you are Python three point seven and above. Okay. So to quit, you just control Z. Press enter. So you click the Python. Okay. Now you need to install OpenCV. Okay. So how do we install OpenCV? Okay, you guys need to type this uh, pip install numpy first. Okay, let's do it together. Pip install numpy. And then click enter. Okay, you because I have already installed, so you guys one you will have a long list to go. Okay, so after install the numpy, you need to install OpenCV. So click this, type this. Okay, uh, pip install OpenCV dash Python. Hit install OpenCV-Python. So I hope you guys can uh, get through this. Anybody got problem, you just talk in the, say in the chat. So let's 
So if all goes well, then you should be able to import the Python. So let's try it. You type Python, enter, import CV2. Okay, Click enter. So if all goes well, you should not have any uh, error message. Okay. So for everybody else who have already done the installing OpenCV, so now in your window, look at look at the window. Okay, so in, in this uh, Visual Studio Code, so in right, left hand side, you just right click, okay, new file, okay, my field, just type in whatever name you want. Uh, I just call it my filtering.py, okay. So .py is actually the Python extension. So for the for this type of file, we call it a Python file, lah. Okay. So after that, you get into this this uh this page. You can uh, start writing your Python code. Okay. So the first thing you need to import import the library. So this library is a uh, call OpenCV. So it's import CV two. Okay. This is how you import your library. Okay, so in Python, in Python, um, you doesn't need to be like C. C, you need a uh, in uh, and then a uh, main something like this, open right. So in Python, we we doesn't need all this. Directly, we can write our coding. So whatever code we want, we just write. So for example, if I say uh, print starting. Uh, starting program. So, and then how I run this 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 program just basically import the CV two and then I just print starting program. So I how I run this program in the terminal. I just type Python, and then the file, whatever file I uh, I name it. So this is uh my filtering. I just type it and enter. So it will run the program. So it just print starting program. Okay. So now I need you guys to uh, copy this, download this uh, this folder into your I need you guys to download this folder first. Uh. Guys, uh Please go to the chat and then download the, the zip file I just sent. Please download the zip file I just sent to you guys. Okay, after download the zip file, right, you extract the zip file into the location. Okay, you extract the file into your location, to this location. So how you extract, you just right click here, review in file explorer, then it will go into the, the folder. So you download the zip file and then you extract it. I think you guys know how to extract a zip file. Okay. So you just extract the zip file into the location. Everybody can follow. If everybody can follow, after extract, go to the blur.py. After you extract, you should see this. Okay. You should have seen all this file. Okay, blur.py image filter. 
my circle, my color, and my moving. Okay. So let us start with the image processing first. So I want you to go to the blur dot py there. Sorry, there's no blur.py dot, dot inside. Uh, I want you guys to go to the image filter.py there. Okay. So inside here, inside here, you guys can see. Okay, let me explain the coding first. Uh. So, uh, for the first line here, import CV2, this one is just import the open CV, okay? So, this cap equals to CV2 dot video capture, okay, you guys should have zero in here, uh, my one is one. Zero means you are using the your webcam as the video input. So for one is because I'm using my another camera here. So, uh, my one is one, you guys should use zero, okay? So after that, while true, this one means a forever loop. This looping is a loop forever until I break it. So uh, I will break it in uh, line 18 and 19. Uh. Means cv 2wait one meaning that if you press, if the, 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 the program will look at, look at your what, whatever you press. If you press Q, if you ex uh, execute this condition, so we sh this condition is just breaking out the loop, and then if you just uh, close the program, okay? So now, let us uh, look at OpenCV. So, to get the image from your video here, you already defined cap is equal to cv 2video captures. So this one, this object, you just, in order to get the, the video, you just type Okay, type whatever name you, you want to call it. Okay, but first you need to have a return return at, at the beginning. Okay, and then whatever name, maybe you can call it draw, you can call it frame. Okay, it's equals to cap dot capture. No, cap dot read. Okay, so this one is you just read the frame at that time. Okay, during the time the video. You just read the frame. So whatever the frame will be stored into raw or whatever name you call it, this parameter here. Okay, I just call it raw. Okay, so it's a raw image. So this one is actually a matrix. This raw image is actually a matrix. It's a 2D matrix that contain all the pixel in your image. Actually, there's a three, there's actually a three 2D matrix, uh, so it's considered three, three D. Uh. So it contains the red, green, and blue pixel of your image inside this raw. Okay, inside this raw. Uh. So let us uh, just run this first without all the filter. I just comment out and see what happened. So you can see, I can get the image from my camera. Okay. So this is the raw image. Okay. Now, after you can get this image right, we need to do some processing in order for you to get the object. Okay. So for example, I have here some coins. Okay and a blue pen. So uh, if I want to capture where is the coin allocated or this coin, so how, what should I do? Okay, so one way is to find the circles, the circles, locate all the circles because the pen is not, it's not a circle shape. So one way is to say, okay, I know that all the coins have the same uh, characteristic. So it's a circle. So how do I obtain the circle? Before I obtain the, the circle, I need to do some filtering first. 
Okay, let me show you guys how to do the filtering. So to close it, just press Q. It will be closed. So first thing I will show you is a uh, Kenny. Kenny is a uh, image filtering to capture the edge, the edge of the object. Okay, let me show you what is Kenny. Uh. So Kenny is just a uh, you just type cv 2kenny and then in here you pass in the, the, the image that you just capture. So in this case is, I just call it raw. So in this, I pass in, and then this is the lower threshold and the higher threshold of the image. What do you mean by lower threshold and higher threshold? Okay, so let me show you. Okay. What is Kenny? So for Kenny edge detection, this is according to the uh, to the library, the documentation. So what it do is actually is scan through the image, is scan through the image and look for the gradient, the, the the change in gradient. So for example, here there's one green color as you can see in the uh, in the in this documentation so the point c is inside a uh, green color region and point a is the edge okay so and point b the 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 algorithm found that wait the 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 color is changes so if you define point a as the edge okay so for the parameter just now you pass in is the lower and higher threshold for it to trigger, okay. For now, I just put it twenty and one hundred twenty. This one you can uh, experiment yourself uh, during your your free time. But now I want to show you what's the effect of Kenny. Yeah. So let us run this again. Okay, have to save it. Let's run. Okay, so this on the right hand side is the raw image, you can see. On the left hand side is the Kenny edge detection. So as you can see, it highlights out all the edge, all the edge of the object. Okay, as you can see in your in my, my screen, the left hand side. Okay, you guys, if you guys can follow. So as you can see in this image. There's a lot of noise, a lot of noise inside here. Okay. You, you see all the, the, the line, there's a lot of noise because why, why it's like this? Uh, it's because in Kenny, it actually capture most of the details of the object. So it's too much details inside this object. So we don't want the details, we only want the outside because if we want to detect the, the coin, we only want the circle right. So what should we do? Then let us go to another uh, concept, it's called blurring. So this blurring, whatever uh, it does, is it blur the image, just like, uh, just like your, your, if you sometimes use the lens, it's blur, okay? This is what, what it, it do. Lah. So this thing I just show you, it just blur the image, okay? So as you can see on the right hand side, it started to be blurred. So in image processing, this technique, the blurring technique, actually allow us to remove the details. Because sometimes we don't want too much details in our uh, image. We only want the, maybe just the, uh, the edge uh, or any larger, larger thing but we don't want the details. So what we do is we use blurring technique. Okay, so for blurring, there's a lot of uh, different type of blurring, but uh, most commonly used is uh, called this Gaussian blur. Okay, this Gaussian blur, you can define it, you can, you can call it by uh, using this CV2 dot Gaussian blur. Okay, then you need to pass in the image that you want to filter. So for, for now, I just pass in my raw image. 
Okay, passing my raw image in. For this one, is the is the kernel size. What what do I mean by kernel size? I can show you. So in this documentation. Okay, so uh, in this documentation, as shown in this, this uh, URL, so the kernel size is actually this matrix here, this matrix. So for this one, it's just a convolution, uh, convolution blurring. Okay, there's a lot of different, different blurring type. So what we use now is called this Gaussian blur. Okay, the, the, the result will be like this. It will blur out the details. Okay, there's a lot of different blurring. For example, this median blurring, it reduces the, the noise, what we call, this one, what we call a, a salt and pepper noise. Because uh, you see that if there's a lot of dot, then after the blurring, it will become like this. So there's a lot of different, different uh, blurring technique. Okay, for now, I just show you Gaussian blur. This is the most basic one. So this one, after blurring, you will get the result like this. So I just show you is a blur result. Okay, so on the right, left hand side is blur, right hand side is a clear one, the, the raw image. So why do we do it? Let us compare. If I only do Kenny, okay, as you can see here, the Kenny image, I pass in the raw, raw image here, so result come out, this image is already after the filter, the Kenny filter. Okay, I draw it out. And then, I another one, I do first, first, I do a raw, I pass in the raw image to this Gaussian blur. I first blur it. After that, I only pass this blur image into the Kenny, okay? Meaning I reduce the, reduce the, what we call, reduce the, the, the structure, and reduce the structure first, and then we only do the edge detection. Let's see what's the difference, uh. okay? So, let's compare. So this is the raw image, okay? So as you can see, in these two image, on the left hand side is just the Kenny, the edge detection. On the right hand side is after you do the blurring, only you do the edge detection. You can see a lot of details is already gone and it actually reduces the noise. Okay, so by using blurring technique, we actually can reduce the noise. Um, if for, for those uh, who are third year and above, uh, HK02, this is uh, what we call a, a low pass filter. So we actually re remove all the high frequency noise from the image. Remaining now is all the low, low, uh, lower, no, lower frequency noise, uh, lower frequency, okay? So this is what after filter look like, okay? So now, we need to, for, for our goal now, we need to detect the coin, right? All the circle here. So what, how we do it, okay? Let me show you how we do it. So let's go to mycircle.py here. I have already write the code for you guys. Okay, I will explain it one by one. So I hope you guys can follow. So in here, this one, I have already written the circle detection object, uh, circle detection algorithm. So just ignore the check valid first. In be below here, okay, same. You guys should have a zero here. My one is a one because I'm using my another USB camera. So you guys should be zero because zero is a meaning is a webcam, okay? 
So same here, cap is equal to video capture, define your webcam. Then you capture the frame, okay, raw is equal to cap dot read. Okay, this return you can just ignore it, okay. So after that, similar thing, we do the filtering first, okay. In this case, I will pass my raw image into the Gaussian blur, okay. First, I blur it out to remove all the noise. And then I use the Kenny edge detection filtering to filter out the edge, okay. And then I pass it through the blurring again, just to make it even blur, uh, remove even more the, the high, high frequency noise. And then I pass, pass it to a threshold. Threshold, this threshold means uh, we sharpen the image. Let me show you. What do I mean? Okay. Sorry, this one, okay, so we press, okay, okay. So on here, the left-hand side is the raw image, okay, as you can see here. So this, this window here, this window is after I, I do the canny and then I do it uh, the blurring again. So as you can see here, it still contains some noise, but after I do the blurring, and then I do the thresholding. Thresholding means I only allow the certain, uh, certain brightness of the image to pass through. So if the image have a uh, too dark, the dark will be uh, eliminate. And then all the, all the all the pixel that are bright enough to pass through will be directly set to the highest the white so it's a 255 in this case okay so it's shown like this so this is what we get after the processing okay you guys can uh, play around with what uh, process you want to do for example you you guys can try uh, another type of blurring maybe another uh, some other filter method. So for now, I will just show you how to capture the the edge, the edge, the edge of a project uh, of a of an object. So normally we do is we blur it, and then we use Kenny. So this two is actually enough enough for uh, for the object detection. But I just uh, go go even further. I just do blurring again, and then I do the thresholding. And convert thresholding also. What what you do is also convert the color image into the black and white image, just like this. Okay. So now, after the processing, the image processing here, we need to find the contour. The contour is the the outermost the 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 shape of the object. Okay. So how we find? We use this function called cv 2findcontours okay? And then we pass in the image that we want to find. So in this case, okay, let me show you. Okay, let me correct here. So in this case is the output. Output is whatever the image I have uh, finished filtering, okay? After I finish filtering, this image I will pass into this find contours, okay? So the next input, this one, is how you want to define the contour. Because sometimes you only want the outermost, uh, outermost um, contours, but uh, not the. So let me show you uh, what what do it means. Uh, later I will show you. So for now I just put ITR return. 
list. Okay. And then for this one, uh, there's two times. One, uh, this one is, uh, do you want to approximate the point? Let me show you what, what does it mean. Okay, let me. I will show you later. Uh, what what does this this mean? So for now, you just put chain approximate none. So if the approximate if uh is called none, means there's no approximation for you. So every single point of the contour will be considered. If you put simple, means that the contour only will the 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 function will only get the four corners of the contour as the point that recorded. Okay. So for now, we just use none, okay? So all the point of the counter will be considered. So this thing, okay, let me show you something. I, for now, I just do in one frame because it's very hard to explain this in uh, many frames. So after we pass this function, the return is counter and hierarchy. Okay, so for hierarchy, uh, you just ignore for now. So this contour is actually a list of contour. So in Python, list is just like a C programming array. But in C programming, in C programming, the array you only can store, for example, if integer, you only can store integer. Okay, for floating, you only can store floating. But in Python, the, the, the array, we call it list here, List actually can store whatever you want. So for now, we just store the contour object. So in Python, we can loop it up. So we loop the contour out. So we can loop this for contour in the list. Okay. So for contour in the list, and then this object, this uh, contour object, we can do two things. One, we can find the area, area of the object. Another one we can find the uh, the bounding the bounding of the the contour okay so let us show show you let me show you what does it means so for this I will uh, just print it out okay so I print the contour and then I print comma means a uh, after printing this, I will print whatever I want. So I print the area, which is the contour area here. So, and also I print the X and Y location. X and Y location, okay. So let's see. So in here, Okay, from the algorithm, it actually found all this, all this contour. So as you can see, there's a lot of contour the algorithm found. So the area range from uh, 9, 2 to 100, there's a uh, 1000, okay? And also all the X position and Y position. So all this is the algorithm found, the OpenCV found from this image, from this uh, filter image. So as you can see, there's a lot of different contour here. So, okay. So after that, we found this contour. It's, it won't be all this is the coin, right? So let us draw it out in the image so, so that you can visualize it better. So let us draw a, draw one rectangle out. Rectangle. So how you draw the image is you use this function, cv2 dot rectangle, to draw a rectangle, and then you pass in whatever image you want to draw on. So now, for example, I just want to draw on the raw image. Then I just pass the raw as I defined here already. 
So for rectangle, there's a two parameter. The first, the initial x and y. Okay. And the final x and y. So what does it mean? It means uh, the rectangle, the, the two corner of the, the rectangle. So for the initial x and y, I just pass in x and y position. So for the right bottom coordinate, I just pass in uh, x plus width, okay, y plus height. So what does it mean? It actually means, okay, I will show you later. So this one is just uh, the, the, the fourth parameter you pass in is uh, RGB value. So which is the color. So for example, I want to draw a green color. So I just pass a 255 in the green RGB in the G, G here. So the second, second uh, matrix, okay. So this one is the, the last parameter is the thickness. I just put it three pixels, okay. So let, let's see what happened. So as you can see, this is what the algorithm found, okay. There's a lot of different, different, uh, different, different control that the algorithm found. So as you can see, it actually found the coin already, but also a lot of noise that we don't want. So how do we fix this? We don't want all this. We only want this five coin. Okay. So first we need to look at the, the coin. What is the characteristic? You look at this control, right? Does it look like square for you? It is, right? So maybe we can say for the width, width is uh, the, the x, x direction and the height, if I divide width to height, is roughly equals to one. Maybe I allow it to pass. And then other than that, I just ignore it. Is it okay? Let us try. Okay, so I will say from here, if, okay, width divide height, I will just comment this out first. Width divide by height, okay, is greater than uh, 0 0.9, and width divide by height is smaller than 1.1, okay. Then I only draw the rectangle out. Other than that, I just ignore it. Okay. So it actually, in this case, you just, you just allowing the, 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 the contour that uh, look like a square. Okay. The contour, the, 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 the contour re rectangle look like a square uh, to go in. Other than that, you just ignore. So let's see what happened. Okay, so now you can see uh, it actually uh, filtering out the sum of the, the coin already. So maybe the threshold we put is not that not that good. Okay, so maybe let's let's uh, put uh, zero point eight and uh, one point two. So the ratio between width and height is greater than zero point eight and lesser than one point two. Still something look like a square. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, no. If divide by height. Uh, you need to do flow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think it's the larger than and smaller than sign. Oh, sorry. I uh I mistake here. So it should be larger than zero point eight and uh, smaller than one point two. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't uh, see that. Thank you for <laughs> thank you, Doctor Indy, for pointing out. So uh, let's run this again. Okay, 
now you, you can see uh, it actually detect all the coins, but also something that we don't want. Maybe this this thing and uh, all the, the point in the pen. So how do we remove it? Maybe we can put another uh, another filter in, another condition in. So maybe we can say, um, what's the what's the definition of a what's the property of a circle? So uh, let's see what's the property of a circle. Maybe I can say that. Okay, uh, let me open this. Okay, let us do some uh, very basic algebra uh, geometry. So let's say uh, I have a rectangle. Okay, this rectangle, the, what is the area? I can say it's a width and height, right? This is very easy uh, geometry. Okay, so and let's say I have a area of circle. Okay, what is the area of circle? So it's a pi r square, right? But what is r? Maybe I can say it's width divided by two. Okay, square. Am I right? So this one also can be uh, pi times width power of two. Okay, then then the whole thing divide by four. Okay, so this is uh, what we get. Okay, so let me draw out the, the, the circle first. Okay. This is the circle. And uh, okay, this is the square. Okay, I just put it back. Maybe just like this. Okay, this one. The design. Okay. So I say that the width here. This thing is called W, okay? Same, this is called H. Okay. Okay, the height is uh, H. So, in this two, the equation, so the area of rectangle is just width and height. So the area of circle is just pi r square. So the r, the radius should be a uh, width divided by two. Lah. So very easy. So maybe I can say um, area of a rectangle divided by area of a circle okay, should be equals to according to whatever we know here. With time height divided by pi times width square. Okay, divide by four, am I right? But if this square is, uh, if this rectangle is a square, okay? If this rectangle is a square, we can assume that the height is also equal to the width. So actually the area should be just W square. So here we can change it to W square. So if we do a very basic uh, uh, geometric, so we can cancel the W and then we found that it should be roughly equals to four over pi, okay? This is a property of a uh, circles uh, compared to the rectangle, okay? So we can say that we agree to that the area should be roughly equals to this, okay? Which is equals to four, Divide by 3.1415, okay? So it's around 1.27. It should be around 1.27. Am I right? So maybe we can put another condition here, saying that the area of rectangles is equals to W square, W multiplied uh, W square. The area of a circle is just area. It's just equals to area, okay? This area, the contour area. Okay, so 
the area of rectangle to area of circle is equals to area of rectangle divided by area of the circle. Okay, this is uh, what we define here. Okay, so maybe we can say that if okay, uh, I need to put a floating here. Okay, make sure it's float floating number. Float here also. Make sure it's a floating point. Okay, so I can say if this area is larger than maybe say 1.1 or 1.0 is larger than 1.0 and this ratio is less than maybe 1.4 1.4 then only i draw the circle okay then only i draw the circle so let's see does it help or not Hmm. Okay, this one, uh, I just put this as the uh, okay, maybe this one I just put with. Okay, multiply. Okay, this one maybe I just put it higher. Okay, so just now uh, it's because of the, the, the range problem because our, our circle is not exactly a circle and also our rectangle is not exactly a rectangle. So we cannot make the condition too small. We need to open up the range. So we cannot make it exactly equals to 1.27, which this is just an ideal case. So for our uh, condition in real real life, in real condition, real, real, real condition, so maybe the circle will be uh, some odd, odd, oddly shaped circle. Maybe it's uh, not exactly a circle, uh, and all the distortion, everything. So it made your thing need to have a large uh, a threshold. So for now, let me do like this. Okay, after I found that the ratio is roughly 0 0.8 to 1.2, the width to height, and then we say that the area of rectangle to the circle is around 1 to 1.8. Only I draw the rectangle out. Let's see what happened here. Okay. Let's see. So as you can see, it's actually filtered out most of the, the error already, most of the noise already. Now left, still there's some, uh, because as you can see in this pixel, this thing actually looks very similar to a circle. So it still have some noise. So what do we do? So this is obviously a uh, noise, right? So maybe we can say, okay, all now this thing is uh, very large. This one is very small. Maybe the area we can do something. So maybe I say, before everything else, the area need to be greater, at least greater than 200 pixels. Okay, then only I do the filtering. Let's see what happens. This thing means we remove all the area that is very small. 
Okay, so as you can see here, all the noise is gone. We only obtain the circle that we want. Okay, so this uh, this thing is what we call a validity check. Okay, validity check or object object detection. Okay, so for now we are just detecting a very simple object is uh, just a circle. So in real life you might be detecting a much more complex shape. Uh, for example, uh, alphabet. For example, numbers. All that you cannot use. Just a very. This is just a very simple conditioning. Uh, very simple condition. So in real life, what we need is a object detection algorithm, which is the, what I just told you guys in here. So after image processing, we are going to do object recognition. So this object recognition is what we will use the contour, this contour, pass into the object recognition algorithm, and then we detect what actually is that object. Okay. So for this class, because uh, it's just an introduction, so I just do a very basic one. It's just a circle detection. Okay, so after this, we can uh, actually, okay, this one, no. We can actually put this into one function called validity check. Okay, so maybe I just declare already. So I declare a function, a sub function here. So in Python, how we declare a sub-function, we put div def, okay, def, okay, the function name, okay, def, the function name, maybe my valid checker, anything. So whatever you want to pass in for now is the contour. I want to pass in the contour. So, and then you can do whatever thing you want to do. And then you return, return the value, okay. So I have already done this uh, function for you guys. So it's same as uh, what we did in uh, in here, in here, same. Just we find the area, then we find the uh, x and y position, width and height. Then we find the ratio, okay? And then we find the radius, uh, which is uh, the area divided by pi, okay? Square root of area divided by pi, this one, I think you should know this. So it's the same if area is greater than 200, okay? And then we do what we do. We find the rectangle to the to the circle area ratio, which is equal to this. Then we found oh, if this ratio is greater than one point one is and uh, lesser than one point eight, similar to what we did. And then if we store the ratio, means the uh, width divided by height is greater than this one. Only I return true. Other than that, it will not go in here if you just return a false here so this one i can put this okay all this is already done in the i can put this as a call this sub function so i call it check valid this this sub function which is equal to this maybe i maybe i just okay like this so as you can see this sub function name check valid so I just define it. I can call it in, in here. So validity is equal to check valid. And then whatever I pass in is the, I want to pass the contour in. Okay. So this validity will be whatever this sub function return. So for here, it return either true or false. Okay. Whatever it returns. So validity is either true or false, right? So if it is true, meaning I just defined here, it passed through all the condition. Okay, so if it is true, then what, what should I do? I just uh, um, I just draw a circle here. Okay, if it is true, I draw a circle. So I draw a circle. The circles is uh, how we draw. We just use CV2 dot circle bracket. The image that we want to draw on, for now, I draw on a raw, the raw image. Okay, I, we need to pass in the mid midpoint x and y of the circle. So for the midpoint x, okay, should be equals to what is the midpoint? X plus, okay, x plus width divided by two. Okay, 
so the the circle so for example uh, let me show you uh, insert oh, text okay So this X and Y is uh, actually, X and Y is actually this point, the top left, okay? So the midpoint will be X plus width divided by two. So it's the midpoint of X. So the midpoint of Y will be Y plus H divided by two. So this one, I think is very easy. Okay, so mid Y is equals to Y plus H divided by two. So we pass in this. So what about the radius? What is the radius? Radius should be equals to, I just say it's equals to V divided by two, okay? Yeah, it's easy. So it's just W divided by two will be the radius, okay? So I pass in the color I draw is a green color and then I put the thickness to the three. Okay, so let's see. And then just now why it's only one image is because I have put a break here means after the loop is done it, it just uh, run through all this it will break break uh, break the loop so now i want to make it run continuously i just remove this break breaking function so uh I, if i want to break i just press q uh, just in this condition here so this way key is no need okay let me show you okay now Okay, argument of floating point. Okay, you need to be integer for the coordinate. Okay, so now let me show you. So after all this, it actually can detect Okay, maybe some of the criteria is uh, different. Okay, maybe uh, we need to, we still need to fine tune some, uh, some of the parameter. So as you can see here is uh, having a bad, uh, hard time to detect the, the, the coin on the top, top left. Okay, so let us fine tune some parameter here. Maybe this one I reduce. Okay, uh, this one just now. Should be 1.1 1 .1 to 1.8, okay. 1.0, maybe. 0 0.8 to 1.2. Let us find tune our, our valid threshold. Okay, so okay, now it's much better now. So as you can see, maybe I just show you uh, some of the different. Okay, uh, obviously it still will have some uh, false detection on the circle. On this algorithm, obviously it will still have some uh, false detection, but you need to, uh, this is uh, what, why object detection is uh, very important. So currently we are just doing a very simple condition. That's why you can see it might have some false detection, as, as you can see, it actually show the, 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 the shadow as the circle, so it's actually wrong. So this is uh, what a basic circle detection work. Okay. Okay. Now, this one, let me recap. So from the raw image, we read the frame, we pass through a series of filter, okay? This filter we need to design so that it remove most of the noise and most of the thing that we don't want. So in here, we just use the H detection, H filter. So because for our case, we, uh, if we want to do we need to do H detection. There's a lot of different filter technique. For example, a, fil a masking, so filtering the color, and also a background subtraction. Maybe uh, we just subtract the background and detect the moving object, which I will talk about it later. So after the filtering, 
then we find the contour, find this contour, and then we go to the object detection. So this actually object detection is a completely a field of it on, on its own. Okay, there's a research field on this. People are doing uh, still doing research on this field. So for now, we just do a circle. So very easy. We just need some parameter and then we just write a very simple conditioning. But in real life, you may you might need to use a neural network, um, a recursive neural network, or deep learning. Okay, in this uh, conditioning. So you might need to train your algorithm. You might need to do a different different technique. Uh, on this object detection, there's a whole different topic in here. Okay, so after we done the object detection, then we can do whatever we want. So for now, I just draw a circle in there. You can maybe uh print out the value, print out the value, or you can store it, store it in a uh, store it in in the file. Uh, maybe I just call it. So this is how you write a file in uh, Python. So I can store uh, maybe the the midpoint of the 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 midpoint of the circles and the radius. Okay. I can do it uh, whatever I want, whatever thing I want, but now I, I'm not going to do this. I just draw, draw a circle in the, in the image and then show you guys. So this is uh, basically how you detect a circle. So up next, uh, later we will talk about colors, how we detect colors and moving object, okay, for this course. Uh, maybe we can have a 10 minute break, is it okay? Uh, Dr. Rin? Yep, we can have a short break and then those who need to catch up, then they can yeah, yeah. catch up. Those who have questions, they can ask you also. Yeah. So for mm. maybe we just take a short break for, for those who want to break. Okay. So I can open my chat. Okay. Uh, just now one person asked you why uh, is three times Gaussian blur. Okay, so this one, the, the blur is actually, uh, this one is actually because after we filter it out, we do the Kenny again, there's still some high frequency noise. So we actually can do it filtering again, the, the, we blur it again so that we remove even more the, the high, high frequency noise. Okay. Uh, and also, this is also, you can use another blurring technique. This is just uh, one of the example I use. So this image filtering, you need to design according to your uh, application. So for example, if your application is uh, you want to remove uh, a certain specific thing. So for example, you want to remove, uh, just now as I say, the, the pepper and uh, salt noise. Just uh, let me show you. Let me show you. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, different different uh, uh, blurring technique as you can see here. So this one, but we do the Gaussian blur is actually. This uh okay since now I have some time I will just talk about what actually is this uh five comma five. This one is the what we call a kernel size. So what is a kernel? So it's actually this matrix here. So for a Gaussian blur, it's not a uh, one. It's not all one. It will be a Gaussian distribution here. So it's uh this five comma five means this one will be a five point. Five times five matrix. So what it does is actually each matrix indicate uh, one pixel. It is actually uh, correspond to one pixel of the particular area. 
So what it does is actually uh, averaging out all the all the different pixel, and then we, we just multiply it with this this value, so that we will come out this effect it will be blur. So for this one is our uh, averaging Gaussian. Is, uh, you have a Gaussian Gaussian one, which uh, is uh, something uh, no not like this. Uh, yeah, some it, it it will be something like this. Okay, so it's it's a Gaussian distribution. It's not a just now. It's only one, right? So this one, it look like this. So for this is five times five. So no, it's just similar to what we do. Similar to what we do here. So, and the last one is the sigma x. This sigma x is actually uh also the value of a. Uh, of this uh, image, uh, of this uh, function. So uh, that one, you can uh, have a further study if you are interested in that. Okay, so it's uh, actually, there's a, a lot of different techniques. So for example, median blurring, okay, this one, you, it will be, effect will be something like this. And uh, bilateral filtering, you will remove the, the details, the texture, etc. So uh, for image filtering, because this course is just a introduction, so I will just introduce you. What we do is normally we do the image filtering first, and then we find the contour, and then we object detection. So what kind of image filtering there is in uh, what we usually use? Okay. So if you are really interested in how to do image filtering, there's uh, actually a lot of knowledge inside it. You can uh, have a further further understanding uh, by reading through all the the documentation here. Yeah, I think uh, different different type of filtering, uh, blurring. Okay. What if I just want to? Okay. This have a similar effect. Hey, about the question just now asked, uh, why is uh, width divided by height smaller than 1.1? 1 .1? That, uh, that one is just the ratio. So the ratio of the width divided by height, okay, this one. If this is a rectangle, the width will be W, height is H. If this is a square, the the height will be approximate to W or equal if uh, it is an ideal world. So in ideal world, if this is a square, the height divided by the, the width divided by the height will be around one. So what we do, because the one circle, the circle property is uh, the, the contour, the, the, the contour you find, if you find the, the four corner of the contour, you draw a rectangle there, it will be around, look like a circle, a square, I mean a, a square. So by doing this, we actually uh, mean if we found the width divided by height is greater than, if uh, between 0 0.8 to 1.2, means it is roughly a square. So it is one of the characteristic of our circle. So this is why we put this as a, one of the, one of the criteria. So for the fine contour, just now I mentioned about this RETR underscore list. So what is this uh, actually, what's this parameter does to our function? Okay. So now if I use list, you guys have already seen. So it similarly, it just detect all the circles and also it detects the circles, okay, these circles within this, within the, the, the large contour, okay. So as you can see, this, uh, this device, this uh, tech, code, tech code device itself has a contour, right? Within the contour, there's a lot of uh, different small, small things. So uh, for example, this 10 uh, button. So this 10 button, there's uh, also circle, so it detected it. 
Okay. So if we change this parameter to external, so it only returns the external one. So if I run this program, so as you can see, now, okay, now, it will not detect the circle inside the, the, the device. Okay, it will, it might sometimes detect it. It is because uh, the, the contour just, uh, the noise caused the contour to, to disappear. So for external, it sh what it do, it should actually just detect the outermost, the outermost uh, circle, okay? So it should only detect the outermost circle, but not the inner one. So if you want the inner one, you need to do the list, okay? For some, for some reason, it's still detecting the, the inside one. I think it's because of the noise. Ah, yes, as you can see, if there's no noise, okay, it will not detect inside. Okay, so this is what we use to pass in. What's the, what's the purpose we pass the external in, okay? So external at least. Okay, so if you want everything, just, just put this. If you want external only, then you put external. So uh, there's a lot of different uh, method. Also, you can look it out, but normally what we use is only list and external, that's it. Other method, maybe it allow you to find the second most inner uh, contours or the third or the fourth contours. It will depend on this hierarchy this hierarchy parameter but we are not going to that for today because uh, it's uh, quite complicated so for now we only use two list and external okay so this is a uh, list again i show you one more time okay so this is list so everything it will be detected every single thing within the control okay. Okay, next we uh, up next we go to the my color so now up next we do color uh, process the color okay color detection okay Let's go to this mycolor.py. Okay, so that you can see the, the coding. So, similar thing we are doing. First, we define uh, our video. Then we capture the frame. Okay, you just ignore this first. Ign ignore this first. Then we process our image. After process our image, I will find the control. And then I display out. Same, same thing. Just that this time, because we want to find the image, we use another method called masking. Okay, we put a mask there. Uh, for those who are third year and above, maybe you know what is a mask. Means uh, whatever it is masked, that will be blocked. Okay, whatever it doesn't mask, it will be allowed to go in. Okay, just like your, just like your computer architecture. Okay, I'm not sure uh, whether you guys still study that. Okay, uh, okay. So for this one, what we do is actually after we capture the image, after we capture the image. Okay, so we need to convert the color from okay we use this cv2 convert color okay then we pass in whatever the image we want to convert okay for this is uh, the raw image okay we need to convert the color from blue green red okay in uh, open cv we store the blue pixel in the first matrix green pixel in the middle mat the second matrix and the red pixel in the, the right hand side matrix so this is uh what open cv does because of some memory issue, okay? So we convert blue, green, red, or BGR, okay? Similar to RGB, it's the same, to HSV, 
Okay, so what is HSV? Okay, I will show you what is HSV. So HSV is a uh, H is stand for hue, S is stand for saturation, V is stand for value. Okay, I will show you a graph so to be more easy understanding. Okay, chart. Okay, this one. As you can see here, why we use a hue, value, and saturation. Okay, for RGB, it's a uh, good for our computer to display because we only need to know uh, how much red, how much green, how much blue we need to display in each pixel. But for uh, in, uh, for the color detection, we can't use RGB because uh, as you know, in white, it actually contains all the three components, red, green, and blue. So it is very hard for us to find out which, uh, which value that we want. So for example, I want only red color or only blue color. So how much red I need to allow? How much blue I need to allow? How much green I need to allow? It's very hard to de define the, the value because RGB actually is uh they are interrelated in our color so if we convert to this uh, hsv hue saturation and value we actually split out all the the component to individual component so hue is actually the color okay hue is what we say as a color so from red to blue and then to magenta and, and back to red okay so hue is solely meaning color, okay? Saturation is how, uh, how bright, not, not bright, how uh, saturated is the color. So how red is red, how blue is the blue. So it's uh, just a light blue or a very uh, vivid blue, okay? You can think of uh, some sort like that, okay? And value is the brightness of the color. Not the color, it's the, it's the brightness of the pixel. So by changing RGB okay, or PGR to this HSV, we actually split out all the individual components so that it is much easier for us to do the, the, uh, the, the condition. Okay, So if we want to change the color, we just change the hue. Okay? If we want to change the saturation, we just change the saturation. If we want to change the brightness, we just change the value. So by changing it, it's actually much easier for us to uh, manipulate. Okay, so this is uh, HSV. Okay, so if we convert the value okay, to a HSV, we can actually do a masking where the masking is we only allow a certain value between a, 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 a pixel that uh, between a certain value to pass through. Okay. So for this case, I'm doing a blue color, blue color mask. So for example, I want to, uh, okay, let us comment this out. Okay. I have a lower, lower blue. Lower blue threshold, actually it's just a threshold, I should, I should say threshold, okay. It's equal to MP dot, right? MP is a uh, NumPy. I import NumPy as MP. So next time I don't need to type numpy, numpy dot array. I just do mp. So I need to define an array, a array object, okay? Because uh, in OpenCV we only use array, okay? So not list. Uh, we need to define array. So we pass in this value. Uh, for example, I just for now I just allow everything out, everything in, okay? So for lower and upper threshold, I allow everything in. And then we pass into this mask, okay? So CV2 in range means uh, in, within the range, we only allow it to pass in. So we pass the, 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 the converted value uh, image in, HSV image. And then we pass in the threshold. So everything that is within actually should be 255. Okay, everything within the lower and upper threshold 
will be passed. Okay, will be allowed. Other than that, will be directly set to zero. Okay, into this mask. And then we do a bitwise end. So n, you know the logic n. So zero, one is zero, one zero is zero. So only that both the image, okay, only that the, the image and the mask, okay, both the image and the mask have a value larger than zero will pass through, okay? Will be passed through, okay? So this y n, we need to pass the two image, they are the same, the two image in here, okay? And then the mass is equal to our mass, okay? So after that, we will pass this process image to processing. But uh, now, for now, I will just make this uh, comment, okay? And uh, just show you what it looked like after passing it, okay? So my color dot py. I don't my color of dot py. Let's see. So now, because I set all the threshold to be passing in, so everything will be shown well, regardless, regardless to all the, the color. Lah. So if I change the parameter, so for example, if I change this to 100, the first value is the hue. The hue, uh, hue is the, the color, the color of the of the the pixel. So let's see what happens if we change the lower threshold to 100. Okay, as you can see, most of the color is gone. So for example, if I put a, a red color here, see what happens. Okay, it still allows some of them in. But as you can see, it actually does filtering some out. Okay. Maybe try to change. Okay, as you can see, all the green is gone. Okay. So meaning the we actually blocking the, the color here. Okay. So maybe I just set the upper threshold to say one one thirty. This is what I have tried before. So for blue color is within the hue. For blue color, the hue value is within 100 to 130. Okay, you can refer on the chart online. Okay, the chart, which is the chart. Okay, so this this chart is a uh, degree in degree, so zero to 360. So you need to convert the degree to the to the uh, eight bit. So it's a uh, zero to two five five. See, so uh, after conversion, you will find that the, the blue is around 100 to 130. So after that, we need to also filter out the saturation. So for saturation is uh, we need, we need it to be, we don't want the, the, the color that are not saturated to go in. So, okay, maybe I, I'll show you. Okay, uh, let, let us put this uh, 130, one to, one to three, let's see. Okay, so actually the, the blue that are not that obvious, not, not very blue one, will be gone, will be taken out because of we set the saturation, the lower limit to be 130. This one you need to tune by yourself, okay? There's no, uh, there's a lot of different different methods to for tuning, but uh, this one, if you are interested, you can you can search it out. Okay, so for now, I want only blue object, and I want the pixel brightness to be certain value only. It will be passed through the through our through our image. So maybe I set this one to one hundred and twenty. Okay, so this one is actually what I have experiment through uh, uh, previously. Lah. So, okay, this one, the value, I just set the threshold. So as you can see now, all the blue that are not that bright and not saturated is gone. So on the left is the mask image, on the right is the raw image, as you can see. 
So if I put a blue color here, you can see it only shows the blue color. If I put uh, this, let's verify. Okay, it will not show. Only the blue color that are uh, because we define it as uh, within this range. So only the blue color that are uh, how to say saturated. The saturation is very high. Only will show up. Okay. So for example, I just go. Okay. You can see only the blue color will go in. Okay. So this is how we mask the color. Okay. There's a lot of different uh, masking also you can do. Maybe you want to mask only the brightness. If you want to mask only certain things that are uh, the saturation is higher than something means uh, you, you don't want the, the, the shadow. You can mask it, the, the saturation to be high and the, the value to be high. The HSD, the S and V, and then the hue you just allow all. Then you will just filter out the shadow. So there's a lot of things you can do uh, with this masking method. Okay. So uh, about the theory, I will not talk much because that one I think you can study from uh, from uh, Mr. Kenneth, Dr. Kenneth class. Okay. So, uh, okay. After we have the masking, then we need to do the processing. So this is what I have uh, come out previously. So first I Gaussian blur it, blur, I remove the noise and then, okay, actually just one time is enough. Okay, I remove the noise and then I do the edge detection, after edge detection and then I blur again, actually no need, just like this. Okay, so this is just the processing. So from blurring to edge detection. So after that, let, let's see what, what the image coming. This one, uh, if you got followed just now, you should know what, what this does. Uh, this is actually taking out the, the, no, the high frequency noise and the meaning the small, small object will be gone. And also the review taking the, the, the edge because of this Kenny, Kenny uh, image filtering is a uh, edge detection. So let's see what happened after filtering. Okay, so as you can see, everything is gone except except some noise also, and uh, this uh, blue color object. Okay, except some blue color object. Let me show you if there's any. Okay, so you can see the blue color is captured. In. Other than that, all gone. For example, my business card. It will not show. Okay. All these different different object because of the masking. Okay. So now you know. Uh, actually, we do it as a step by step. So first we mask it and then we filter it. Okay. So now, okay. After this similar approach, we do the control. We find the control. Okay. Same approach. So now we find control. Okay. Now, same thing. Control hierarchy equals to find control. The image that we want. Okay. I just pass the process image in. Okay. The the control we want to find from the image. Okay. So which is the the image that are processed. Okay. Not the raw one. The raw one. You cannot find anything. Else. So, and also. This one, because this time we uh, only want the external, because we want to detect a blue object, we only want the external contour, okay? So, and uh, this one I just put none, you can put uh, simple also, but none is uh, not re relative to this. Uh, this one not re re relative to our application now. So this one, same from, I look through the controls, I look through it, and then I check the validity of this contour. Okay. So I look through each contour, I, I check the validity of each of the contour. So this check validity is uh, just a function that very simple check. I just check uh, the area that are greater than 300. That's it. Okay. I just check whether the area is larger because I don't want, just now as you can see, as you can see just now, the, the image that's still some uh, small dot there. 
I don't want, I don't want the small dot. So I just put a very simple condition where the array is larger than 300. I return true. Other than that, return false. So if the validity, which is the function return, which is this one, return true or false, okay, it's true. What should I do? Okay, else I actually no need this one. Okay, what should I do? Uh, maybe this time I just draw a, draw a rectangle. So how I draw a rectangle, I just find the x, y uh, with the position of the contour, the width and height of the contour by this function. Okay, I, I explained just now, bounding rack. Okay, so I just draw it, okay, using this cb2 dot rectangle I, I already explained just now. So you just pass the, the image that you want to draw in, okay, and the x1, y1, x2, y2. So x1, y1 will be the top left corner, the coordinate of top left corner. X2, Y2 will be the coordinate of the uh, bottom right corner. So what uh, is the coordinate of the top left? Just X, Y. And uh, bottom right will be X plus the width and the uh, Y plus the height. Okay. So this is the color I want to draw. I want to draw in a green color or maybe blue color, anything. Uh, maybe this one. So this is the thickness. Oh, maybe I just draw in green is okay. Okay, this is the thickness. Maybe I just say a one. Okay. Let us see what it will do. <clears throat> so if you just find all because we already uh, process it from here from the left hand side the process image, it will capture the contour from the left hand side. Okay, here seems to have some blue color. Okay, maybe it's just fall in here. So I just take that. Okay. So from here you can see because of the masking and the processing from left side, the image, if you find the contour, where it also will filter because of our validity here, the area must be larger than 300 because we want to get rid of all these dot the noise here. The noise might be coming from the surrounding, maybe your fluorescent line, everything. So it might cause some, some noise. So you still need some uh, validity check. So after that, you will come with uh, this. Okay. From here, you capture the contour and then you capture the contour here. Okay, from the process image, this process image, which is this one, which is the, the one that you already process through all the steps before. Okay, masking, image filtering. Okay, come to here, you pass in here, you find the contour and in external, okay. After that, you process, you find the contour from here and then you draw, you draw, you draw it, you draw a rectangle in, in where, in the, in the raw image which is the, 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 the raw one, the raw image, which is this one. Okay, you, you draw a rectangle to here using the, the, the value that you capture from, from the process image. So if I don't show you the process image, okay, if I don't show you the process image, it will look like this. So if you look like the machine actually, get actually get the value get to find where is the blue color object okay so this is how we do a color detection okay here okay this one okay blue color like this no maybe this one okay if you detect all the blue color Okay, uh, you can do it uh, any color you want, but uh, for red color is a bit much complicated because red color, it actually fall between, because red is uh, around zero for the hue. Uh, let me show you. 
HSV chart. Red is a big difference. Uh, okay. okay, so because of the red is fall in a zero here, the, the, the hue is zero, it might go to a negative, means uh, the 300 here. It fall between magenta and red. We all consider it as red. Lah. So, um, for red, you need to have two times masking. So mask one time, and then you mask another is this region, and then you add it up together. So for what we do now is we only do one one time masking, which is uh, N, bitwise N. For that, you can mask one time in uh, this red region, and then you mask another time, which is in the, 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 the around 360 region, okay? So in this region, you both mask together and then you all, you bitwise all together. So you add, add, it, add them up. So it will become a complete picture. Uh, this is, uh, if you have interested in doing a uh, color detection. So um, basically this is how we do a uh, color detection here. Okay, so you will notice the, the frame is Dinner because I just changed this parameter. If I change back to three, okay, you can see the difference. So you can, you guys can uh, play around with this, changing. Maybe you want to detect a green color. So green color is what value of hue you guys can find it out on your own lah. Okay, so this is what we do when we detect blue color. Also. If uh, sometimes the project, uh, this is just a very basic, uh, because we are studying, right? So this is just a very basic, uh, very basic application. Okay, so somehow this one is blue. Okay, so this is just a very basic application. So we only do one time conditioning. So sometimes uh, you need uh, maybe after masking the color and then you need to do from the color and then you need to detect the shape and then you need to filter out a lot of things, different, different things. So uh, that one is depending on your application. You can do it, okay? So from here, okay, from here, you already get the color. Maybe from the, from the validity check here, you can filter it uh, to find only uh, rectangle or only round, round object or only triangle object, whatever, lah. okay? So this is uh, what we do, okay, this is filtering. So lastly, okay, just now we cover shape, color, and lastly, one more thing is a uh, moving, moving object. Okay, I will go to a uh, moving object now, because, the, okay. So similar thing, first we define our video, Okay, same thing. And then we capture the image. Okay, but now there's a one more thing we need to do for moving object. For moving object, uh, actually there's two types. One is a static background. Another one is dynamic background. For the dynamic background, I will not cover in this workshop because for the dynamic background is a uh, involved many many different algorithm which uh, is i don't have any time to cover it but now we just talk about static background so how we detect an object moving when the background is static okay we use this what we call is a background subtractor so what we do is from two image let me show you So for example, here I got a got an image with a different pixel. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So for example, let me show you. Uh, uh, I have an image that is a nine pixel. Okay, each are different different value. So I want to detect which pixel is changed. So it's moving. So how we, how we do? 
So I set this as a pass image, okay? And then I capture again the image, and then I look at the image, maybe say uh, the five is already here, and the four now is here. Okay, so means the five is actually moving from this, pix this pixel, C2 to B2, okay, is moving. So how we find, uh, how we capture these details out? We actually, what we do is we can use the, uh, the next image to minus the previous image, okay? If we minus it out, we will found that only the moving image have value, okay? This is one of the way for us to detect the moving object in a static background. Okay, you need to take note that if the background is dynamic, means, means that if the background is moving, maybe you are in a car, then uh, it's, impossible, it's impossible to use this uh, method. Okay, this method doesn't work in a dynamic background, only for static background. So for static background, if you minus it out, you will find that only the moving thing left inside the, the subtractor. Okay. So you create this background subtractor, I call it FGBG, okay? And then I apply the mask, okay? This SGBG, I apply it to the raw image, okay? Through this function, FB, this FGBG, FGBG, the background subtractor, will is a class that have this uh, apply function that I can apply into the raw image the image that I want to apply, which this time is just raw. Okay, you can apply to process image, whatever, but now I just want to directly apply into the raw image. So I call it uh, the mask, okay? So this already apply mask, I just do some filtering. Okay, this one is the uh, background subtraction. Okay, after that, I do some image filtering. Okay, maybe I show you what it should look like before filtering. Okay, so what it show what it look like with the FGB FG the, the the subtraction if applied. Let's see. Okay, so as you can see here, nothing here. If I move something, okay, you can see only the moving one because if you don't move, once it subtract, all become zero. So only the moving one will have value in here inside. Okay, so as you can see here, if I move one of the one of the coin in, so it will have some value here. Okay, so uh, but obviously we cannot use uh, this as the, the control detection because you see there's a lot of noise here. So what we do, same thing we detect the edge. Okay, using this uh, Gaussian blur and a Kenny. Okay, so let's see what after filtering. You you can do uh, whatever filter you want, but now I just use a very basic one. Okay, sorry. This to output. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. As you can see, it will show the edge, edge of the moving object. Okay. So. Okay, I can just find the control in my uh, same thing. What we did, what we did, what we did just now, the for the uh, uh, for the shape and the color detection. Okay, same thing. We do find the control. Okay, we find the control and then uh, actually this one should be simple or not unexpected. Okay. Uh, we find the contour, we only want the external one, okay? So the approximation, there's no approximation, we use all the points, okay? So 
for the contour, we just do a very basic validity check where the area is larger than 500, then we, we set it through. Other than that, it's false. Okay, same thing just now what we did. And after that, if the valid is true, then we draw a rectangle here. I think uh, this one, no need to explain more. Draw in the raw, raw image, okay? So let's see what happened here. Okay. So you can see when I'm moving, actually fine. But uh, as you can see, there's still a lot of noise in here because uh, the shadow, everything is, uh, everything is uh, doing the noise. But uh, you can uh, do the uh, different uh, different image filtering to filter out all the noise. But now I just didn't do it because the main thing here is I want to show you what the background subtraction look like. So it's keep on subtract the image, keep on subtracting it. So it will only allow that the thing that I'm going to go in. Okay. So this is moving. Okay, this is moving. Okay, it will go. Okay, so if uh, I didn't display this output out, it will look like this. It will be looking like the the computer can detect the thing that I'm moving. Okay, so it's uh, just that simple. So this is how you are. Uh, do the moving object detection with static background, okay? So for dynamic background, you need to go and look for object detection. So the object detection normally is uh, uh, using RCNN or deep, deep learning, okay? Because it's uh, much faster than neural network. So uh, this is what I can talk about today. So all three is uh, basically just the, the shape, the color, and the moving object detection. So uh, actually this is uh, what this class show. Um, is there any question on this three, this three, uh, this three algorithm? Because I've uh, almost finished here. Um, is there anybody here? Hello? Anyone have questions? The chat is empty so far. I don't know if they <laughs> directly message to you or not, but the general um, chat is... I didn't receive any. Has been so very silent. Yeah, I think probably they... <laughs> Yeah, I fall asleep already. <laughs> Maybe so, they are uh, busy trying things out. Probably they are. They are <laughs> trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ahmad is still here. <laughs> so, um, uh, you guys can uh, try different different things. Okay, using your webcam, you guys can try to run the the, the algorithm just to make sure. Okay, regarding to the move moving. Would the sensing be limited by the FPS? Hmm. Uh, about this, uh, actually, uh, it used the, the, the previous image and the current image, they uh, subtract it. So if you're not limit by your FPS, if your FPS is low, then it will be like, a, how, how you say? The difference between the time of uh, each frame will be large. So uh, if you capture, the it will not be so smooth la, if your FPS is low. This is what I can tell you. La. But if you're not limited by the camera FPS, okay. So if your FPS is low, you will see the frame is like one frame and then suddenly skip to another frame. Uh, just like this. Okay. And uh, one thing yeah, uh, if you guys trying the program. Make sure, make sure this video capture here is not one, it's zero. Make sure it's zero. Because why I used one is because I'm using my webcam, my USB webcam here. Okay. 
you guys should use zero. Zero is the default camera of your laptop. Okay. So any question else? Mm. No, I don't think it is a memory error. So can I see the, you are running the coding or I think probably some, some, uh, somewhere around your coding have some error. Are you running the coding that I send you? Hmm. Interesting. So does the, the program run or it directly crash? I think uh, the thing is uh, your, this one, your video capture is set to one, is it? You have to set to zero this one. You have to set to zero for your case. And also, if you are trying to use your webcam to uh, do the image processing, make sure you are not using your webcam in uh, any other software. So for example, Zoom. Zoom, if you are opening your webcam, then your program cannot call your webcam. Okay. That's why I'm uh, requesting you guys to uh, turn off the webcam for the Zoom. Anyone else have questions? You can also unmute yourself and ask questions if that's easier. But if you have error codes, then it's easier to use the chat. Yeah. I'm just trying. Uh. So everyone can hear me uh, after I yeah. press the mute. Oh. Yeah. It's the first time I use Zoom also. Yeah. So so okay. I finished my meeting. I just dropped by here. So it's good to see 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 everyone can actually stand until one. Uh. We, we we thank the ten or so uh, to, to <laughs> share everything. But okay, carry on. Uh uh Tanya La Solan. Kan semalam dalam grup pun kita meria-meria juga tu. Uh, it's okay. You, even other things, uh, I mean, for example, how this thing helps in next time when they go for job or this thing, you can ask also. Yeah, no need to be too serious or too technical because uh, we are, you know, it's one already, uh, fasting time also. So everyone quite tired also. But uh, do, do take this opportunity to ask uh, Yaten some questions, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you have any question you can ask. Uh, on the moving part, how sensitive is the moving that it can be tight? Mm, how to say? This one, uh, actually, the, the masking you do here, this masking, okay. This masking actually it is just a tool for you. So, okay, let me see. It is just a tool for you to find the, I'll say the subtracted image, just like just now the I show you in Excel. Okay. So it's just a tool for you to find this, this, uh, the right hand side, the output here, as you can see here, this image here, this is actually still a filtering method. So it's just a tool for you to find this, uh, this 
filtered image out. So after that, uh, how sensitive you want to it to be is depending on how you filter it and how you detecting the object via the object detection. So for us, we just use this uh, check value. It's just a very, very simple uh, object detection. It's just a rule base. Okay? So it's just area larger than 500. We allow it to pass through. So you, if you say uh, you want a very small change, then maybe in here you need to do a very complicated uh, check checking. So maybe if you only want a very small image, for example, I, I can say, okay, for any area that is larger than 50 and area that is smaller than uh, 150, it will return true. So it will return the, the thing that is very small. Only very small thing, okay, but, but as you can see here, it's a lot of noise. So it will come out a lot of different, different things. So th this is just an example for me to show, depending on, uh, because if you want to fi filter the uh, small thing, very, very fine thing, then you will need a much uh, sophisticated checking algorithm. Or maybe you can just use object detection uh, AI. So uh, neural network, RCNN, everything, deep learning, okay. So uh, I think this is uh, depending on your, actually for this question is depending on your uh, checking algorithm, okay. And also one thing uh, is uh, the sensitivity also de depend on your, on the, Make, uh, the how to say the, the the resolution of your camera okay if your camera is a bad resolution then obviously if you not detect the really sensitive part okay so also depending on your resolution the, the spec of your camera where the resolution the the frame rate uh, does affect your sensitivity yeah So any other uh, question? I think if there's no question, uh, I will pass this back to uh, Dr. Rini. Is it okay? <laughs> okay, new question. How about heat detection that they use? Is that another algorithm? Okay. Okay, for heat detection, that uh, actually is uh, the camera return the image. Okay. So for heat detection, the, the camera returned the image in also in a similar thing. For what we read, we will read as a, the image similar, just that the color is look very odd. But you still can use the image, the same is a, also a pixel. You still can use the image and then you still can do the filtering to find maybe the shape. Maybe you can locate a people uh, through object detection and uh, actually they are similar just that heat detection they the camera is looking at the uh, infrared region for our conventional camera yeah, we are looking at the visible light region okay i think uh, this one you should know uh, in your your physics high school physics so heat detection uh, camera they are looking at the infrared region of the spectrum so uh, you still can use the, the image processing method. You can find the moving part, everything. It's the same. You can just treat it as a normal image. Just that the value come in is uh, for, for, it's still uh, RGB. It, uh, they are the same. Just uh, one is looking at the visible light, one is looking at the IR. Uh, that's it. Uh, any other question?
Any other questions? If no question, I just pass back to uh, Dr. Rini. <laughs> <laughs> you have been waiting to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, thank you everyone for your questions and a big thank you to uh, Yakin for the talk. It's very informative and the flow is very good. <laughs>